Yes, good evening. Yes, I am assuming I am clearly visible and I am also assuming that I am clearly audible. Let's start with this particular session. Uh, first of all, a very warm good evening from my side. Uh, my name is Mustafa Ali Shah and uh, as far as the civil services exam is concerned, I'd like to give a brief introduction about myself and my journey for this particular exam. I have attempted this civil services exam six times and out of these six attempts, I managed to clear the prelims exam five out of my six attempts. Last uh, to last year, that is in 2020, I also appeared for the interview or the personality test of this particular exam. That means I have a certain amount of experience of all the three stages, prelims, mains, as well as interview. I have been able to uh, utilize uh, my preparation uh, for this particular subject, uh, economics, because economics was also a subject of my graduation. I have graduated in this particular subject. And uh, uh, I would also like to start, this is the first lesson for a new course, which we are about to start. And this session is basically going to deal with economics related doubts and you people are basically expected to ask as many doubts as possible okay and you are also expected to participate in this particular course the agenda of this particular course is that we basically are going to cover economics from civil services perspective in some amount of depth i would like to cover that uh, subject in depth so that you get a uh, benefit out of this particular subject so, since economics is a very very important subject as far as your prelims as well as your mains exam are concerned it has a substantial amount of weightage for both those categories fine let's begin today's class so first of all let me uh, introduce you a bit about an academy so this is a platform an academy is a very successful platform and we have the best of educators for almost every single category for example if we talk about economics Manal sir teaches economics fine and uh, we also have uh, 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 some other faculties for different reputed faculties for example Siddharth sir teaches polity uh, we also have Sudarshan sir who teaches geography, uh, Pratik Nayak sir who teaches history, so we have Ravi sir who teaches basically science and tech and environment. So we have uh, faculty who are dealing with all these particular subjects. Right. So this is me, Mustafa Ali Shah, and we'll be discussing economics for the civil services exam. So let's let me discuss some uh, of the details of this particular course, and let's proceed now. Right. So these are some of my uh, achievements. Since this is our very first session, I would like to uh, tell you uh, about something about myself. I have cleared the UPSC civil services prelims exam five times. I have attempted this exam from 2015 up till 2020. I have given all six attempts to this particular exam. And out of these six attempts, I managed to clear the prelims five out of six attempts. That's the number of times I have cleared the prelims exam. I have also appeared for the interview, civil services interview, the prestigious civil services interview in 2020. And I have also qualified the net exam, UGC net with JRF with history. History was my subject while qualifying this particular exam. Fine. So I hope uh, this is, my details are quite clear. And now let's discuss some uh, issues related to uh, uh, this particular thing, the community thing. So uh, at an academy, I also have a community from uh, which you can basically follow from. And they, I'm also enclosing the link to this particular community. You can go out there and check my community as well. I post regularly related to doubts on uh, economics or whatever uh, uh, I feel is important for civil services I frequently post on the community channel as well. Now let's discuss what this an academy means mentorship program is because this is the latest value offering which an academy has been providing. Right, so what this program entails it basically is one month extension of plus for plus subscribers whoever has enrolled in uh, qualified the prelims exam and is about to appear for the uh, mains exam can have a one month extension of their plus subscription. In this particular course, we'll have live mentorship with educators and we also have a dedicated answer writing program. So you people are uh, expected to enroll in this particular program if you want. Question is why an academy? Uh, there are numerous reasons why an academy is probably the best platform which you should be looking forward to. Uh, answer is that we have the widest choice of educators. The flex uh, courses are really flexible. You can watch any number of courses any number of times. Uh, as per your convenience. For example, if you are available, say, from 8 to 10 in the evening, that's when you can watch your courses. There's no restriction of watching only live courses. You have unlimited views. We have dedicated doubt solving sessions, right? Uh, I, for myself, take economics related doubt solving courses on the Plus platform. 
right? So you can also avail this particular uh, thing as well, doubt solving. We also give printed comprehensive notes. The preparation is end to end, right from prelims up till the interview stage. You will get a very holistic preparation. There's live mentorship and there is also a very important feature called daily answer writing practice for the main exam. So this is the offering from an academy. Now the next question which comes is, uh, uh, when basically you can uh, go for this iconic bonanza, you basically have uh, we have a separate offering called iconic apart from plus, which exclusively caters to the civil services exam. You will get all the plus benefits. Apart from that, we have three other features. That is one-on-one -on -one live mentorship. You will get a mentor for yourself. Uh, who to whom you will be accountable to. We will also have daily answer writing practice and 24 to 7 doubt school. That, that is you can ask as many doubts as possible uh, from our educators related to your curriculum. So this is the main test series program, uh, the optional test series program which the details of which you are clearly legible to you and I hope you will be able to easily access them. Also one more important offering from an academy is Mega Combat, which we usually take on Sundays, 11 p.m. Okay, so this is a very peculiar feature of an academy, wherein uh, you'll get 50 questions to solve in 60 minutes. This is a gamified version, a gamified live scholarship test, in which you'll get, uh, uh, these are the offerings which you basically are going to get. And the best part about uh, participating in the combat is, you get to know as to what your opponents are doing, right? Since it's a live test, uh, your opponents are participating, and if you score well, that means things are going well for you. So that's the beauty of this particular test. I would recommend you all, and this is a free for all test. Everybody can participate in combat. Just make sure that uh, every Sunday from 11 p.m. you aim you participate in this particular test, an academy combat test. Fine. So let me come to the next slide now. An academy subscriptions. What sort of subscriptions do we provide? Here is the list of the subscriptions which you can choose for yourself, and whichever subscription you feel like going for, you can access this particular. One. Fine. Uh, similarly, the same goes for the plus subscriptions as well. We have a wide variety of plus uh, subscriptions along with iconic. Fine. So let's start. Now let's come to the uh, chapter as to why to study economics. What is the utility of economics? Fine. So let me discuss economics as a subject first. Because it is a very important subject. You have to read it uh, in utmost amount of depth. Why do people read economics as a subject? Why do uh, civil services aspirants have to go through this particular subject. That's a question that comes to a lot of people because economics as a subject has a huge weightage both in the prelims exam as well as the mains exam as well as the current affairs as well as the interview stage. Every single uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, way you'll have to read economics uh, quite in depth, right? So why do we have to read this particular subject in depth? Answer is uh, economics has a lot to do with the daily activities which are going on. Because this subject peculiarly deals with a lot of things which go on on a daily basis. So please make sure that you read this particular subject in utmost amount of depth. It has a substantial amount of weightage as well. Fine. What is the utility of reading economics? Economics helps you think clearly. Economics deals with allocation of resources. Allocation of resources. We are going to uh, cover these things tomorrow as well in our course uh, when we uh, basically discuss the structure of everything. I'm just trying to give you a brief idea as to what this particular thing is, right? So economics basically is a science of dealing with the allocation of resources. How resources are going to be allocated? Who is going to benefit from that? Because resources, as we all know, are limited. So that's why we have to read economics and we have to make sure that as civil servants, we utilize our resources well. That is the importance of reading economics. Clear? It's a very interesting subject. Uh, divided largely into two parts, macro as well as microeconomics. We are trying, uh, I'll be endeavoring to cover both these subjects to the best of my ability. And we are also going to make sure that we, uh, as far as the civil services exam is concerned, I'll strictly uh, restrict myself to what is required for the civil services exam. So you'll benefit a lot uh, in the long term in this, from this particular course. Right? So let's come to the next slide now. The weightage. Because before even I discuss what will be the sources, first is let's highlight what is the importance of this particular subject. Okay. The first most important at the most important particular relevance of this particular subject is every year in the prelims paper, you will get at least 15 to 20 questions from economics, at least 15 to 20 questions. That's the bare minimum which economics has, right? Even if you look at uh, say 22 cup paper, 20, the, the latest paper, which uh, happened on 5th June, uh, exactly a month ago, you'll find around 17 questions were asked from economics. This shows 
the weightage of this particular subject is huge 17 one seven questions were asked directly from economics right so this makes it a very very important subject from your prelims perspective and the best part is economics related questions are largely asked from the newspaper current affairs has a very crucial role to play when you look at economics related questions i'll endeavor to cover some of those questions as well in my upcoming course or in my upcoming lectures uh, lectures i'll try to cover as many questions as possible for you people and i'll also make sure that i uh, basically give you an idea as to from what was the exact motivation for upsc for ask, asking that particular question this is also something i am planning to cover in this particular course right so please make sure that you read the newspaper to the best of your ability uh, uh, to the best possible in the best possible manner so that you are able to cover a lot of questions for the prelim exam yeah so it has a substantial weightage for the mains exam there is a very important paper gs paper 3 gs paper 3 is uh, considered to be the most dynamic of all papers of all the gs papers 3 is the most dynamic okay and 3 has around 2 3 subjects from which questions are asked you have questions on economics on science and tech on environment on internal security and also on disaster management these are the portions which are covered for this particular paper and jahan tak uh, as far as economics is concerned approximately 6 questions are asked from economics uh, in gs paper 3 directly from economics and these questions can be theory based on economics these questions can also be current affairs related to economics that depends on the uh, liking of the exam upsc tries to make the paper as much dynamic as possible that is why they have started exclusively asking current affairs related questions as well like gdp changes which were brought in changes in calculation of gdp that was the first question for last year's paper right so they, they have been doing this for quite some time so question number 1 2 and 3 which is uh, worth 10 marks and question number 11 12 and 13 which are worth 15 marks basically you are going to get 75 marks worth of economics out of 250 75 marks worth of economics is asked in gs paper 3 herein lies the importance of this particular subject i hope this is making sense the weightage the importance of economics as a subject uh, i'm trying to highlight to the best possible manner also when you are going to attempt essay it's not like the relevance of economics lies solely in gs paper 3 it is also a very important subject as far as your essays are concerned they are going to ask a lot of themes from economics related to essays for example it has been said that upsc has started asking a lot of questions on or from uh, say philosophical issues philosophy has become a very uh, crucial area a very core area of ups for upsc uh, as far as some of those issues are concerned uh, if you look at 21 the mains paper of 2021 specifically had around seven issues out of those were philosophical in nature uh, people are saying all those issues were largely philosophical if you don't have understanding of the philosophical aspect uh, you you'll find it very difficult to answer the questions but you also have to understand not just philosophy you are supposed to be aware of all the elements of a particular or all the dimensions of a particular aspect right so if you are basically attempting uh, to answer uh, any particular essay you will also have to make sure that you have some idea of the economic aspects of issues okay there was a specific question uh, called uh, prosperity and uh, I, i i don't exactly remember i was attempting a mains related paper in 2017 and it had a question on prosperity and uh, islands of prosperity and seas of despair that uh, probably was the uh, question and i uh, Uh, deliberately because since i have a background in economics i deliberately wanted to give it a economy related angle to that particular essay i uh, started writing about poverty in this, that particular essay uh, on the uh, 20 point program of uh, shrimati indra gandhi so that history related dimension can also be covered in that particular essay i also talked about the uh, tendulkar committee report or rangarajan committee report the uh, uh, message i am trying to give here is you have to make your essay multi dimensional while attempting this particular exam and for making it multi dimensional you will have to make sure that you can uh, cover all the important aspects of a particular uh, question this uh, is eventually going to help you a lot in uh, solving that particular answer so economics as a subject not just helps you in gs paper 3 it is also going to be very fruitful and beneficial for you as far as the essay paper is concerned you have to derive a lot of themes 
from economics apart from that current affairs if there are, there are six major subjects for this particular sub, uh, examination which you have to read for both prelims as well as these what are these six subjects indian polity science and technology environment and ecology uh, you also have indian economy history and geography if i uh, basically take up all these six subjects the subject which has the maximum amount of weightage of current affairs i consider indian economy to be that particular subject economics is such a subject which has uh, which is not to be read once it has to be imbibed again and again and for that you need to have a very good command over the newspapers or the current affairs right so economic related issues or economic related related questions will also help you uh, tackle the current affairs related dimensions as well so please read the, those uh, particular things as well well uh, in advance so that you are able to cover them in depth that also is a very important significance of economics now let's come to the next slide from where to study another very important question which civil services aspirant face uh, also uh, you can ask as many questions if you want uh, my chat se section is open if you have any specific queries related to economics feel free to reach out to me via the chat section let let me discuss as to what is the uh, 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 relevant what is the source of these particular of this particular subject indian economy from where you are supposed to read this particular subject answer is first of all you must be reading ncrts of class 11th and class 12th the sine qua non and this is specifically important for those people who do not have a background in economics as a subject people who have not read economics either in their school or in their college life they have to exclusively read the ncrts of economics in good amount of depth if you have not read it uh, before hand and i would strongly recommend that you start reading the ncrts of first class 11th and second class 12th what sort of ncrts are supposed to be read for class 11th answer is there is a book called indian economy a very good book as far as your mains exam is concerned because this book is going to give you a lot of understanding as to what is to be taught or what is to be read in the mains exam so please read this particular book well indian economy of class 11th this is going to benefit you this book has a lot of keywords which you will matlab uh, which you definitely will benefit from and which you can actually imbibe in your answers you can actually write these words in your answers class 11th indian economy there is also a book called statistics this also is taught, taught in class 11 but this book is not to be read please don't read indian statistics wali book for the civil services prelims exam because it's of no use they are not going to ask a lot of questions on this particular aspect and uh, it's uh, strictly not important as far as the civil services exam is concerned we are not supposed to read it now let's come to class 12th class 12th has two books i have already highlighted these one is macroeconomics second is microeconomics and both are equally and very very important macro as well as micro earlier what used to happen was civil uh, in the civil services paper upsc restricted is itself to asking questions on macro economics largely you even in the prelims exam you will find majority of the questions being asked from the macro economics related questions portion micro was not asked but as far as my understanding is concerned after the prelims paper of 2018 you will find questions exclusively dealing with micro economics as well not just in the prelims exam but also they can ask a few questions in the mains exam and that should be our agenda as well so that we should cover ncrts in such a depth that they are not only covered for the prelims perspective but also for the mains perspective not just from macroeconomics point of view but also from microeconomics point of view that should be our intention as well apart from that once you are done with the ncrt once you are done with the basics of these particular subjects what should be the next course of action answer is you should be going for structured courses by educators of this particular subject they also will play a very crucial role for example an academy uh, if we talk about an academy and if you wish to have a bilingual course you can go for manal patel sir's class if you want a course in both hindi hindi and english you can definitely watch manal sir's course you if you exclusively want the course in english there is ramesh singh sir's course which also is equally good so based on your understanding based on your preferences you can go for a structured course where in all the relevant material all the material which is uh, important for civil services examination or the current affairs related to that particular subject are largely covered and you have if you have any specific queries related to that particular subject uh, there are dedicated doubt solving educators as well something which i have already discussed in this class it is the uh, endeavor of those doubt solving educators to make sure that all your doubts related to a particular subject are resolved for example i take up doubts related to economics fine apart from that 
after you are done with the structured course, after you are done with the NCRTs, I would recommend please also read, start reading the newspapers. They also play a very crucial role because newspapers uh, uh, consist of current affairs and economics as a subject has a lot of current affairs. Whatever is going on in the society at one particular point of time has to be understood by you people, has to be read by you people because UPSC has a tendency of asking some very specific questions if they think, for example, if the rupee, let's let's take an example to for better clarity. If the value of rupee is depreciating, this may become a potential question. For example, you probably would have read that wheat and rice imports, sorry, wheat and rice exports were banned, recently banned by the government. There, there may be some reasons why these particular things were banned, okay. The reason was that the government wanted to secure the uh, interest of domestic consumers. They did not want the prices to somehow shoot up. That is why these were bad. But this thing will also have uh, numerous ramifications for the society as a whole. Right? So economics will help you understand as to how this, these things are interlinked and how if any decision is taken by the government, if anything is happening in the economy and how it is basically uh, providing a crucial, how it is basically affecting the other sectors of the economy. That is something you will be able to connect with. This is the connection which economics will be able to provide, the current affairs, the newspapers will be able to provide. Apart from this, in, if you wish to supplement your uh, sources of current affairs and the newspaper, you can also read a well-structured magazine for this particular subject. Right? And a magazine, a good magazine will help you basically understand the nuances of this particular subject. And uh, this will also help you uh, get, gain some good fodder points for your mains exam, fodder points. For mains. So that's the intention of reading a particular magazine. Although I am of the opinion that a magazine should always be optional. If you are very well versed with the newspaper, if you are very religious as far as the newspaper studies are concerned, I am of the opinion that magazines can be entirely skipped. But if you are not very regular with newspapers, then you should definitely go for a reading of magazines. Any good magazine for economics related content. So this is where your content should be coming from. I hope up till now the situation is quite clear. Every question is comprehensively resolved. Now let's come to how to approach this particular subject, how to study this particular subject. Another important question which a lot of aspirants might be having. How should I basically structure my courses? How should I read this particular subject? First is, I would strongly recommend that read NCRTs for basic understanding. Start reading the NCRTs right away if you have started and I am assuming that you have started this particular sub subject right away. It's not like you are reading this particular subject for quite some time. I am of the opinion that you have recently started your preparation and you are reading these things for the first time. For that particular aspect, try reading the NCRTs first so that you have at least some amount of idea or understanding as to what is there in the subject. Okay. You can also refer to uh, basically the important uh, keywords which are there in UPSC syllabus. Understand one thing, UPSC as far as the GS syllabus is concerned, the syllabus of GS is very tentative in nature. Okay, they have not indicative in nature. They have not gone into a large amount of depth to explain as to what they are going to ask. Fine. So they, uh, the the uh, the language of the syllabus, as far as the prelims is concerned, specifically for the prelims exam, it's very very uh, crisp, to say the least. And sometimes the problem is we are not able to understand as to what are the requirements from where these things are to be read in how, in what amount of depth these things are to be read, that, that is something which uh, a lot many of you might find difficult to cope up with. I would uh, on be uh, of the recommendation that try to find a very detailed syllabus of uh, economics, say economics is the subject you are reading, try finding a detailed syllabus with all the necessary keywords of that particular subject, so that after you start reading those particular words, because you will have to find meanings of those particular words, you also have to uh, read those words in ample amount of depth, you have to connect those words with the current affairs, that is a task which somehow is quite cumbersome and that is going to somehow need some time as well. So I would strongly recommend or suggest that you read NCRTs for a basic understanding of the issues, right, that, that is going to serve you well. You can also basically, apart after you are done with the NCRTs, refer to standard books for depth and command because civil services exam, although it's an exam for generalists, the kind of questions which are being asked especially in the prelims exam, they are of a uh, high order. The questions which are being asked are of a very high order and they somehow 
want you to specialize on this particular subject. They don't want you to remain a generalist. You, they want you to specialize on this particular subject. And for specialization, I am of the opinion that apart from NCRTs, you should be referring to a standard book as well. If that's what you feel like. If you think uh, just by reading the NCRTs, you, don't, you haven't had the requisite amount of depth, you should definitely go for a standard book. What sort of standard books are those? Uh, there is a very popular book by uh, Ramesh Singh sir. The name of this particular book is Indian Economy by Ramesh Singh sir. You can read this particular book for your reference and read that in depth if you want. Because economics uh, has a weightage of 75 marks and there are going to be 6 questions every year from this particular subject. UPSC is very particular about uh, managing this particular thing. Uh, the number of questions which they ask and the uh, amount of marks from, uh, of which the questions are asked. So you should also be referring to standard books. Apart from that, be regular after you are done with your reading. But this is something you should be doing right away from the first day itself. Be very regular with the newspapers and the current affairs. Right? Because this subject is a very dynamic subject. Economics for once is a very dynamic subject. This is not like history in which all you have to do is read your notes and revise your notes multiple times and be done with it. That's not a criteria we keep for economics as well. Herein, you will have to have a very strong amount of depth as to what you read and you will have to always update your notes. That also is a very important criteria. Regular updation of notes has to be done. Fine. After you are done with this, you should also, uh, towards the later part of your preparation, look for previous year question papers. You have to be very, very good with the previous year question paper. Uh, I would recommend that uh, people who are appearing for 23 or say 24, they should start reading papers especially after 2015. At least 6-7 years of question papers need to be uh, known to you and you should buy hard the content of those questions. The questions should be very familiar to you because UPSC might not exactly repeat those questions again but UPSC has a tendency of repeating the themes which, had, which they had asked in the previous year paper. This is something you will find uh, when you delve deeper into the art of previous paper, year paper reading. You will find that a lot of questions which UPSC uh, has asked some of those themes might get repeated in some of the other forms. So if you have a good command over the previous year question papers, this is going to benefit you in the future paper. Trend, you will be able to understand the trend as to what is uh, what is something which has caught the attention, caught the eye of UPSC, what is something which UPSC is interested in asking and you will get you will also get some idea as to what you should be reading for that particular thing. That is the intention of reading the previous year question paper. Apart from that, last but not the least, you should also be uh, practicing both prelims and mains related mocks. Another very important thing which you, need, you should be most certainly doing, practice as many prelims and mains related mocks as possible. How this will help you? But look, uh, the civil services exam is not just an exam of your uh, knowledge, it is also an exam of how much you can retain information. And retention needs a lot of practice and exercise. That is why I would strongly recommend that prelims and mains related mocks after you are done with your understanding, you have made a substantial amount of understanding, your basics are clear, you are well versed with the current affairs, start solving as many questions related to the prelims exam and the mains exam as possible. They are going to help you. Fine. So this is how you are going to structure your study and read. Now uh, so th that's it for today's uh, lecture. This was a brief idea, a brief introduction as to what is to be read. Also understand that we are launching an optional related carnival at an academy wherein we'll have specific educators for all the uh, specific subjects. We have uh, educators for geography, for history, for sociology, anthropology, agriculture, public administration, maths, PSI. And since these are uh, whatever is maybe your optional, you are supposed to basically start away with these particular optional from these particular uh, reputed faculties. You can read and uh, have a strong amount uh, of command on your subject. And we also have comprehensive prelims campaigns integrated batches which are starting from, which have already started from 29th of June. So you can avail uh, the important lectures from them. So this is something from my side. What I would recommend is from uh, this uh, course is usually going to happen every alternate day. And in the next class, I'll be starting with the basics of macroeconomics. I'll start with the very basic things because I am of the opinion that this course should be uh, referred by those who basically are starting this particular subject, who basically are uh, from uh, starting economics as a subject from the very beginning. That is why I will try to make sure 
so as to complete all the important topics, important issues which are there in NCRT. That would be my first agenda. After I am done with those things, I will be starting with some specific current affairs related details as well. And looking forward to seeing you all in that particular course and I hope uh, this will be an interactive session for you.